everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to play with Derma Sea Spray. This acid dye color, I think, breaks and has yellow and blue pigments in it, and I have only, I think, played with it once. I played with it in a video, and I think it broke, and then I went back to try to find the swatch of it, and I couldn't find a crude swatch of this color anywhere. So I figured let's take a closer look at it and dye some yarn with just sea spray and see what happens and where the colors take us. Before we jump into the yarn dyeing, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Ina. Ina, thank you so much for being my lab partner today and I really hope you're going to enjoy the sea spray yarn. Since I will be playing with dry acid dye powder, I will be wearing a respirator mask and safety glasses and gloves whenever I am dealing with the powder. Everything I'm using today is dedicated for dyeing yarn and is not used for the preparation of food. And we will be dyeing the yarn today in this four inch deep full size catering steam pan, which I have across two burners on my stove. We're gonna to start today by dyeing 100 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and I pre-soaked it in just plain tap water for about an hour. I just added four cups from the pre-soak into the pan, and to that I'm gonna add one tablespoon of white vinegar. In order for acid dyes to work, you do need to make sure you have the acid uh, for the colors to set, and you also need heat. And unfortunately, these acid dyes will not work on cottons or synthetics. Um, so the four cups, especially because I had squeezed out a lot of the water in here, four cups of water is enough that we can be real low immersion, and we can always add more liquid as we go on. But I just squeeze some water out and I'm gonna spread the yarn out, fair amount in the pan. And actually I'm gonna add one more cup of water. It all depends sometimes on how much liquid you've squeezed out of your water, how much more you might wanna add. And so I started with four cups of water and now the yarn is still above the surface of the water. If I press down, you can see the water spread out, but there's enough liquid in here that I know uh, things aren't gonna dry out. And so when I turn on the heat, it'll heat up, but I don't, I'm not concerned about anything burning, which is important. So I'm gonna let this heat up until it gets steamy and then get suited up so we can play with this color. I'm now in my respirator mask, so I am more muffled. I actually have a blog post on a good respirator masks recommended by other indie dyers, so I'll have a link to that down below. But I'm going to reduce the heat because we're going to be dealing with the dry powder. I don't have a yarn mop <laughs> or anything on me, just the skein right now. And we're just going to see what happens. This is a paint swatch from Derma Trading Company of I think a 1% depth of shade on silk is what's from the poster. So this is gonna be a little different from what we see on here. The actual color of the powder is very, I would say almost like a twilight gray color. So I'm gonna take a little pinch and sprinkle it on. Ooh, that is really pretty. It's looking very teal. Okay, so I, sprink I sort of speckled it over there. And over here, I am going to tap it out. And it does seem to shift color when exposed to either the heat or the acid. I'm not sure if the camera picks that up, but it does. So over here, it looks more green. There's definitely spots that look more green and then it looks more teal. Let me zoom you in. So over here, it looks more green. And over there, it looks more blue. This is consistent with what I saw in the other video. And actually, I do see some hints of yellow popping out as well. I am curious if I increase the heat, if some of those green hues that are around this outside edge will shift more blue. Um, but I, because I did on the other patch, it felt like the colors shifted. So I just raised the heat and 
and I'll come back in about a minute and we'll check. Okay, we are very steamy. I'm gonna reduce the heat again. And it does seem to me that some of this area right here looks more of that teal and less green. So I do think that there is some amount of shift that happens when either the dye is exposed to, I don't know if it's the acid or the heat, to be honest. I zoomed in on a new area. I'm gonna take another small pinch and come in and speckle with it so we can see and watch what it does and any color shifts. Watching the dye spread very, very slowly, uh, it does seem like when the dye starts to dissolve and really come into contact with the heat, it shifts from being more of a green to more of a teal color, which isn't unusual. I see deep purple look extremely brown and then turn purple. Uh, I'm not sure if it's exposure to the acid or the heat or both, but it does also shift and I've never seen it keep that brown color. But in the mason jar video, I saw both like a clear green and blue. And so clearly we're gonna need to try dip dyeing to see if we see pigments hit differently. Um, there is no question that this color breaks. In this area that we speckled first, there are areas where we do see some yellow specks, which is actually something I also saw on that mason jar yarn. All right, let's flip the yarn over. I am really curious what we might see. Okay, so I definitely see some yellow streaks, uh, which is not surprising. Uh, and then I do see Huh, I see some more blue. This is looking more blue than I think it felt to me before, where it felt more green. So maybe we are seeing some like the yellow strike fast and some colors spread. I don't really know. All I know is that I want to go heavier and speckle and tap out the color on this yarn. So, Again, clearly it breaks. Clearly I need to do some dip dyeing. But let's have fun and go heavy with sea spray on this yarn. We are unquestionably seeing breaking here. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we'll see colors breaking when we go and dip dye later on. Breaking can happen for two main reasons. With speckling, if there's a mixture of pigments in the jar, you can see different colored speckles. But breaking can also happen through other liquid techniques if a pigment in your mixture will bind to the yarn faster than another pigment. Whether that is faster because of a temperature or a pH, there's many reasons that could separate the rates that the pigments bind to the yarn. But some colors that you might see break apart with powders, you might really easily be able to capture that with dip dyeing. Others, it might be a bit harder. So I just wanted to throw that out there. I ended up really just having fun messing around, adding the dye, moving the yarn, uh, and even adding some more liquid from the pre-soak and then adding a little bit of dye powder onto the water, dissolving it and moving the yarn through to just add a bit more color all over. I love the ocean blue we have here with hints of green and teal and blue. It is stunning. Now I just need to let things heat for a little bit to make sure the color is set. And then we can start thinking about and planning to dip dye to see what can happen. It's been probably another 10, 15 minutes. I'm gonna turn off the heat and leave the yarn in here to cool off, which I don't think is necessary. Like there is no color left in the pan, but some additional heat certainly is not gonna hurt. And this tonal yarn is stunning, stunning. I think that sea spray is a notoriously tricky color, maybe. 
I don't remember exactly, but I believe that it was a topic of conversation amongst the Indie Dyer business owner Facebook group of a new batch, one batch being very, very green, and then getting a new batch, and then suddenly the color is very, very different. So I don't have like an answer about that, but there are some colors that are just a little bit trickier to deal with, and I wonder if this is one of them. or. Really, if it's, I mean, it's beautiful and I really like it. So I don't know entirely if this is a color where people have had issues with it behaving differently from different batches or not. Um, so if you have had some issues with sea spray, uh, let me know down below. But I just know that the, the color is gorgeous and this yarn we created is stunning. And so I'm really excited to dip dye to see if we see any shifts. But I'm still perplexed by the real blue and green patches that I saw previously. And granted, there were some other colors in the mix, but I still don't know what happened. I don't know. So who knows? Maybe this would behave differently with a cool vat. Uh, yeah, we'll have to explore more and see. But next up, let's get ready to dip dye. I measured out one gram of the sea spray acid dye twice and then dissolved each of these separate grams into some tap water. The volume doesn't really matter because we will dip dye 100 grams of yarn into the one gram of dye total on two different bases. So the important thing is the total amount of dye, not the volume of water that we have here. And so let's go to the dye pot. I have pre-soaked some more Knit Pick Stroll fingering weight yarn, which again is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and I have also pre-soaked a skein of Knit Pick's Wool of the Andes, which is 100% Peruvian Highland wool, and this is the base that I use for a lot of my Will It Break videos, because it's really easy to get some colors to separate on here. Since historically, I found it really easy to exaggerate breaking on this particular base. I think, I don't know which yarn base we're gonna start with, but we've got about 12 cups of water here in our dye pot, and we are gonna do the dip dyeing one at a time. Uh, and I am gonna add, I think just one tablespoon of white vinegar, and we'll see what happens. We are heating up slowly, slowly, but I am gonna go ahead and add our dye. And it did all dissolve really easily in that hot water. I am really curious uh, how pigmented the final color will be. We got a gorgeous color uh, when we were speckling, but this uh, dye is now at a percentage that would be a 1% depth of shade, which to be fair, since we're dip dyeing, we'll have one end that is more pigmented and one end that is less. So it's not gonna be representative of that hue for 1%, but we will see. So as soon as we are at a simmer, then we'll start dip dyeing. Okay, we are gonna start with the stroll because I am curious what we'll see. And you can see that uh, when I go in initially, there's pigment there, but it's not that dark. Like this color is marketed more as a medium pastelish type color. And so what that means is that in one gram of dye, there's less pigment than say we would have in navy or extreme blue and things like that. And so you can still get a really beautiful pigmented color by using more of the dye, but it's not the same um, as dealing with a color where the swatch from the poster is more medium or deep toned. So I am not seeing any breaking at the moment. And by that, what I mean is that I am seeing sort of like this teal, marine blue type gradient, which is beautiful. Um, but it's possible that those pops of green that we saw in the speckles are so few and far between that, um, that if they've dissolved in the water, then we might not see it. And so almost all of the color has absorbed. And 
I didn't need to add more acid. So it was all striking with just one tablespoon and 12 cups of water, which means we'll use the same dye bath with the wool of the Andes in a moment. Um, a lot of times with dip dyeing, I do one tablespoon of vinegar and eight cups of water. So this is actually less acidic than that. But uh, yeah, I mean, from this, I wouldn't necessarily say, okay, it's broken. Like, is this more blue? then there, is there more green in the end? It's hard to say. That's something that maybe you can make the argument, but it's ultimately very subtle. And there's nothing like something like purple pop or radioactive where you can really see that breaking in a dramatic way. Um, nevertheless, this color is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I'm gonna let this sit for 10 minutes uh, and then we'll come back. I don't think you can necessarily see but the dye here in my cup does look more green than what I see here is more blue. So I do think that there's a component of this color that is reacting uh, with the heat. Oh, funny, the light in here is fairly yellow right now. Um, I would say that when I'm seeing on the monitor it looks more blue, I actually see more yellow in this myself. I mean, my hands, the color's a bit off. But uh, the color here, feels more blue than what I see on the little paint swatch. Let me see, okay, let me see changing the white balance. Mm, still looking a little blue. So even if the swatch isn't showing how um, I thought that the color in here would be a bit different, I did expect it to be a hair more yellow than what we've been seeing, but I think that the color we have is still gorgeous. Um, absolutely gorgeous. Okay, it has been 10 minutes and I'm trying to get the zip tie up and I think all that color is in the yarn and I don't really see breaking. We'll see what we see when the yarn is dry, um, but again, it's a very gorgeous sort of marine blue color. Now, what I am going to do, as that is set aside to cool, um, I'm gonna turn the heat back up and we are gonna add the other gram of dye to reset. And I definitely saw a range of colors pour in as I did that. The bottom in here is blue, what went in first is really green. I think There's no question this color will break. And I mean, just look at this blue that is in this cup. This blue is way bluer than, than this color I just brought out. So that to me is, well, evidence the color does shift in the pan. Um, so that's one thing that we, we've, I guess, sort of known. But the other is that Breaking is a possibility, so maybe, and not in this video, but maybe if I had it in a, in my catering steam pan and I poured it uh, in a v sort of uneven way, we would be able to capture that. Um, but, you know, just because I can't capture something breaking with dip dyeing um, doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. Uh, but there are some things and it could be, maybe my temperature was too hot, maybe I needed to be colder. There's other variables that can come into play, which is how sometimes things break and you weren't expecting it and you don't know what happened. <laughs> but uh, once it heats up, we'll dip dye the next yarn. Alrighty, let's go. Now sometimes I get questions about using uh, non-superwash wool and dipping into a hot pot when it wasn't hot before. Uh, this is not something that typically causes felting, but if you are dealing with a yarn with a lot of halo that's a little bit, quote, sticky on itself already, maybe a single ply, a more delicate yarn, uh, those you might uh, see some felting from just breathing on it or even just soaking the yarn a little bit. So I'm trying to like watch and see what we can see here. Uh, the colors are definitely clearing slower than before. So I'm slowing down a little bit because there's a chance we could have something that doesn't absorb. A chance. 
So it's unclear. And one thing I'm looking for, it's like sometimes you see a color of your yarn when it's in the pot. And then when you have something that's breaking, when you rise up, some color and pigments clear. But if the two colors are like a blue and a green, it can be hard to say for sure. And again, this is the exact same dye bath that we used for the last one. There is no question to me that when I have the yarn in here, then I raise it up, I feel like I maybe see some pigment come out and come down. I think I'll give myself about one more minute of a slowish dip before adding the rest. Now the issue with breaking colors this way is that it's somewhat additive. So if the colors go at different rates, but say there's a lot less yellow than the blue, you might not be able to capture it and see it if a lot of it has absorbed along the way as well. And it does appear we're semi-clearing. I don't think it's been a whole minute yet, but I am going to add this in. And aha, can you see? It is very slight, and I don't know if it'll hold. It looks slightly greener to me than the rest. Eh, but not so much anymore. So, I don't know. Um, I do think that this is a color that has a potential for breaking, but did it break with dip dyeing? I don't think so necessarily. Uh, at this stage, I'm going to add some more vinegar just so all the color can absorb. Now with a non-superwash yarn, yeah, most of the color is here in the yarn. Uh, with a non-superwash yarn like this, you do want to make sure you don't agitate it a lot in the pot, but a little bit of movement in and out is fine with this yarn base. But anyway, I'm going to let it sit for 10 minutes. Do we have breaking? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, I mean, we know that we have breaking with speckling, but we didn't see it with dip dyeing. And so that doesn't mean that you can't see it with dip dyeing. It just means that in the conditions we had set up today, we didn't. So now I'm going to let all the yarn cool and then we can wash it. The yarn is all cool, so let's wash it. I really like this color, and I still haven't gone to search to see if sea spray is the color that some people are like, it shifts, like this batch is more blue, this other batch is more green, but we'll see how these colors compare to each other in the end. Certainly, I know in the speckled, I still see some green patches in there, um, but good news, we're not seeing any bleeding yet. I'm now going to add just some clear dish soap. One of these days, I have central pole in my house. One of these days I'll start using it. Um, need to remember that I just want to do a video where it's like, hey, today we're gonna dye yarn and wash it with central pole. <laughs> um, but yeah, the water is clear. I am going to wash the soap out of the yarn, put it all through my spin dryer and then hang the yarn up to dry. Here are the three finished skeins that we dyed with sea spray. And ultimately, they all have the same marine blue-ish color. But there are definitely some examples of breaking. There are pops of this brighter green throughout uh, the first skein that we speckled. Overall, I think a lot of the speckles are of the more blue color, but the few hints of that green do show up in here. As for the two dip dyed skeins, there is a hint almost of some yellow down here, but it's hard to say for sure and know like, okay, could this just be some of the natural wool color? I don't know. The base color of Wool of the Andes and Stroll aren't identically the same bare hue, so it's really hard to say or to make a conclusion, but I do not see definitive breaking with dip dyeing. But as I mentioned, this doesn't mean that we wouldn't see it in some other ways. I forget now if avocado broke dramatically with dip dyeing, but what I did observe from the sea spray that I dissolved is that as I poured the liquid out of the cup, 
the color shifted and not just in a warmth way, just in what I saw. Like there was a lot more of the green at the beginning and the finish was very, very much more blue. So if those green, bright yellow, green pigments, if those bind to the yarn first, that would make it really hard to really see the breaking if the blues in there are the dominant color. So it is worth exploring this, but starting with just the mixed liquid dye and adding it on lowish immersion just to see if anything happens, that you observe anything interesting. And so my further reminder here is colors can break in different situations. You might not capture it with dip dyeing. You might see it in other ways and therefore it might come up in a way that is surprising and then you might not know how to deal with that. <laughs> you might not know exactly what it was that caused it and that can just happen. Uh, but there are some dyes that you know will break and can break in a more predictable way and some that might just surprise you sometimes. So it's just worth keeping that in mind, especially if you see other dyers talk about issues with the color. For example, I don't think I've ever had a trouble with Dharma Dark Navy. Uh, sometimes in solution it can look kind of purple and then it turns navy with heat, but I've had some people say that they've had it and it's turned out really brown, which is not something I've seen. So that's why it's just worth keeping in mind and uh, honestly supply suppliers can shift the colors when different batches, I suppose, as well. So keep all that in mind. Sea spray is such a fun color and I'm not sure if I legit forgot to swatch it at some point or if I had mislabeled it uh, on one of the many crude swatching videos I did. But either way, it was fun to dive a little more deeply into this color and I'd like to play with it more in the future. Ina, thank you so much for being my lab partner today, and I really hope you're gonna love your yarn. If you would like to learn more about how you as a viewer can become a lab partner, get shout outs in the video, and yarn that I dye in the video, uh, you can find more details in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop, and if the listings are sold out, feel free to send me a message and I can tell you more about it. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. One other thing to keep in mind is that a 1% depth of shade is one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn. So it's not actually a measure of how saturated an actual color is. It's referring to with one type of dye, how many grams did you use on the yarn? And so if the dye has a lot of filler, then it might be less pigmented than a different color. So that's just worth keeping in mind. <laughs> uh, please make sure that you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and smash that bell to turn on notifications. I publish new content every Tuesday and Friday morning and you don't want to miss any of it. Thank you so much for watching.